Hi everyone! In today's video we are going to compare MQTT versus HTTP and find out what is the best choice for IoT. Let us start with MQTT. MQTT is a communication protocol designed specifically for IoT. It has published subscribe architecture and here is how it works. We have a client which is publishing data. We have a broker which is at the center of each communication and we have one or more subscribers who are subscribing to data. The producing client called the publisher sends a specific data point to the broker and the broker would send it to all interested subscribers. And these subscribers can also be publishers themselves because we have bi-directional communication flow. Let us move on to HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and was created to make documents available across the Internet. Servers contain resources that are identified by the URLs that have the basic familiar form to which HTTP clients can make requests. In an IoT environment, a common use of HTTP is to allow devices to post to a resource that represents the device state on the IoT service. And now let us compare MQTT versus HTTP. MQTT has published subscribe architecture, also called PubSub, while HTTP has request response architecture, client server model. Key difference here is the following. In client server model, a client communicates directly with an endpoint, while in the PubSub model, the client that sends a message is decoupled from the client or clients that receive the messages. The connection between them is handled by a broker. This decoupling allows PubSub to scale better than the client-server approach and easily add more consumers and producers of data. Common targets are topics for MQTT and URIs for HTTP. The underlying protocol is the same for both technologies. It is TCP IP. Secure connections are the same for both technologies. A significant advantage of MQTT over HTTP is client observability. MQTT allows client state to be monitored via notifications when client unexpectedly disconnects, which is not possible in HTTP. MQTT has asynchronous event-based messaging, which means that the publisher doesn't have to wait until the consumer consumes the data because of decoupling. This is a very scalable way of communication. This is not the case for HTTP, where messaging is synchronous. In MQTT, the broker can queue messages for disconnected subscribers, while in HTTP, the application needs to implement message queuing. Message overhead is 2 bytes minimum in MQTT and 8 bytes minimum in HTTP. Message size is 256 megabyte maximum in MQTT. In HTTP, there is no message size limit, but 256 megabyte is beyond normal use cases anyway. Content type for MQTT is any, and for HTTP it is text. Message distribution in MQTT is one to many and one to one in HTTP. MQTT provides three qualities of service and thus improves reliability, while in HTTP this has to be implemented in the application. So what is better for IT, MQTT or HTTP? MQTT fits many more IT scenarios than HTTP, as it was designed for the Internet of Things. An exception, HTTP might be a valid choice to connect devices which already have an HTTP client installed to a provider which has an HTTP option, but then only for low-volume data transmission and without the option of sending control commands to the device. Check out MQTT Essentials playlist to learn more on MQTT Essentials and head to our full blog post on MQTT vs. HTTP for a more detailed technologies comparison. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.